Hi guys, I know that the um, groundwater lab can be a little bit challenging, so I thought I'd post this video to give you a little bit of help with it. So first of all, on the first page, uh, a number of the questions you just have to explain things that happen, but there are a few calculations. In particular, I think it's uh, 10.7 and 10.8. Now, just because there's math involved, don't let that scare you. In your lab manual, it tells you exactly what equation you need to use and what variables you put in the equation. It's basically Darcy's Law. And it simply becomes multiplication. And so it really is not, um, it's not as complex as you might think that it is. Now, where things can start getting a little more confusing is when you have to start working with a map like this one. This map shows a few different things. First of all, in these solid lines, that's the elevation of Earth's surface. So you can see in this solid line, it's labeled 780. That means everything on this line is 780 feet above sea level. This solid line is 760. Well, everything on that is 760 feet above sea level. What are the dashed lines then? Well, the dashed lines show the elevation of the water table. So everything on this dashed line as far as the water is, the water is 700 feet above sea level. Right here, the water is 680 feet above sea level. And remember, underground, water behaves like on the surface. It's always going to flow from higher elevation to lower elevation. So for example, water underground here will be flowing in this direction, right? from higher to lower elevations. Um, on this problem, you're also, on this map, you're going to have to find a location where there's a swamp or a standing body of water, like a pond or something. And the way you do that, you have to look for a place where the elevation of the surface is equal to the elevation of the water table. So you'll look around at all of these water table elevations and see where it's equal to the surface elevation. So for example, on 700 here, let's follow it around. I run into 760, 740, 740, 740, 720. I never hit 700. So nowhere in there do we have surface water. So the next thing you'll do is follow this 681 across and see if you uh, find a place where it intersects the surface, where it's equal to the elevation of the surface. Now, the next part that we're going to look at is right here using this diagram. Now this diagram here, it's um, a cross section showing a layer of sediments up here, another layer of sediments here. This is labeled aquitard, so that's impermeable. We have an aquifer here and then another impermeable aquitard under there. There are three wells in there. We have one well right here going into that aquifer, one well right here going into this aquifer, and one well right here that's just in those surface sediments. And the question asks, um, of these wells, you're supposed to label one of the wells A, one of them B, and one of them C. Well, you're going to label A is possibly a flowing artesian well. So you figure out, do you think this one, this one, or this one is a flowing artesian well, and you label it A. B is a possibly not a non-flowing artesian well, and C is a well that might produce from an unconfined aquifer. So you just label which one you think is which of those types of wells. Now our next question that might prove to be a little challenging involves this map. But this map is actually very similar to the uh, previous one, where again, in our solid lines, that's the elevation of the land. So right here, that's 740 feet above sea level. And these dashed lines are the elevation of the water table. 
And in this map, what you're trying to figure out is which ones of those wells, uh, there's six wells on there, which one of those are flowing artesian wells and which ones aren't. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to figure out which part of the map has the water table higher than the land. And how you do that is you look for places where the water table and the land surface intersect. So for example, right here, this dashed line is the water being 800 feet above sea level. And if we look here, this line is where the ground is 800 feet above sea level. Those two are equal right there. So I'm going to put a nice dot right there. Then I'm going to look here at 820. Well, my water is 820 feet above sea level, and right here, so is the land. And I follow this across, and I figure out that, oh, look, right here, 820 intersects with 820, and it does here as well. And then I'll follow 840 across, and check it out, 840 the water table intersects with 840, the land there. So eventually you're going to have a whole bunch of dots and you're going to basically connect those dots into a line. On one side of the line, the water table will be higher than the land and that's where your artesian wells are located. Now on this last page, you have another calculation that you're going to have to make and in this case you're figuring out the average rate of subsidence in the San Joaquin Valley. And remember anytime you want to figure out a rate you're going to use the equation distance equals rate times time and the problem gives you a distance right there's our measurement nine meters of subsidence and your time well, it's between the years 1925 and 1977. Figure out how many years that is. That's your time. And then you can solve for the rate. Now, as always with these labs, if you have any problems or any questions, please, please contact me and I'll do what I can to help you.